for something I saw that you had talked about publicly, and so I want I want to see now just to know that I don't think this is an ambush or a gotcha question. If you talk about it publicly, I feel like it's fair game. Although you might tell me it's not fair game, and we'll just cut it out. Um, but I know that you had an agent that had approached you, approached your video originally, and then you you, you secured with a Twitter pitch, who it turned out was not actually it was was. Was telling you a story and was not actually submitting your your work anywhere. Is that right? Yeah. So um, I did have an agent, and um, they no longer, as far as I know, they no longer do agent work. So I do feel like it's okay to talk about it. If they were still actively an agent, I probably would not say anything because I wouldn't want to affect their career. Um, but from what I from what I know, I think they stopped. So. Um, they were representing me and they were awesome and we went through a first round and we so Sea of Kings was actually a young adult originally and so the first round of submissions was was really great and I got some feedback from these editors and then after that I did find out that it was no longer being sent out even though I was told it was so that was a, a bummer but um but yeah, like it, in the end, it worked out okay. I, I realized from the time waiting to hear back that I just wanted to change it anyway. So I changed it to a middle grade and I and I changed a lot of things about the characters to, to make them younger and 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 it, it worked out okay in the end. But it was a little bit of a surprise when they when I found out that they hadn't been completely honest with me. The reason I, I asked this question is not because the, the name of the show is Let's Explore Your Trauma with Rob. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not my intention, but I do want to give, because unfortunately these, these stories come along. Uh, not all literary agents are created equal. Obviously anyone who's been on this show is probably amazing. They all sound amazing, so I assume that they must be. Uh, but there are some unscrupulous folks out there. In a situation like that, um, what were the clues that, uh, that maybe something was not above board? And what were some things that in retrospect were, were clear signs that might might be warning signs for those listening who might unknowingly be in a, something of a similar situation? That, that's a great question. I mean, there are definitely red flags that you can look for, but um, the problem is, is if you do, sign on with an agent and you submit a work with them even if you do find these red flags are happening you're kind of in a tight spot so at the beginning working with this agent it was great and then slowly we started um so a, a red flag would be loss of communication they're not communicating with you anymore or they're getting really slow communication they should be responding to you within a, a regular business time frame like three to five business days is is normal if it's beyond that, if, if they're taking like a month or two to reply to you, that's that's really bad. Um, so lack of communication is a big one. And um, I know that different agents work differently. So there are some like really stellar agents who are good at their job, but they're not great people persons. Like they don't communicate very well, but they're really good at their job. And then there's other people that are really good at communicating and they're almost like your best friend. Well, they're not so great at their job. So like you kind of have different people and different agencies. So it's it's hard to say, but lack of communication is a big, big one to look out for. And then um, and then also if they haven't sold your book within a year, usually I've heard that that's you. You're OK. It's totally fine to to part ways with an agent if they haven't sold your book in a year. Some people like to stick it out or change and submit a new book. Um, but I, I mean, I read a lot about this, so I was like, yeah, about a year. It's, it's OK to like say I'm going to try a different agent or I'm going to take it away. The problem is, though, if you do submit the book to editors with an agent and then choose to pull it out or, or leave the agent, that book is sort of harder to sell now. So um, you can sell it, but if you were to go to another agent and you said, hey, I had this agent and I was trying to sell a book 
I was trying to sell book A with this agent. Will you take book A and sell it for me? And they already know that someone else tried to sell it. That agent's probably not going to take on the book. Is At least that's what I found from my personal experience. I don't know if that's true for everybody, but you're better off just submitting a, a new project. How did someone else bring this to your attention that this was happening? Or how, how did you come to find out that this was your situation that you were in? Well, I had a feeling, so I, I kind of stuck it out because of that sort of uh, catch-22 that I was in. I didn't want to give up on the Sea of Kings book because I loved it so much and I really thought it had potential, but I also realized that I had, you know, lost the, the connection and, and the communication there. But it was, it was actually this agent leaving the agency that brought everything to my attention because then once they left, I, I was lumped in with all, all the clients kind of were like, whoa, what happened? So we kind of were able to get our records back and see the submission history and all that. And, and that's when I found out. But I was already, I was already kind of like, I already knew things were not so great. I just wasn't really telling anybody. <laughs> You know, because you don't really want, I almost feel bad saying this now, like you don't really want to tell people what goes on behind the scenes until something's like final. You don't want to tell anyone that you might be getting a book deal until you have the book deal. You don't want to tell anyone that you're possibly going to work with an agent until you've like signed a contract with that agent. So I, I didn't say much at the time, and it was only after the fact that I decided to share the story just in case someone else felt the same way that I felt and was wondering if, if it was just them or if this could be a bigger problem. No, I mean, I completely 100% understand. I mean, frequently it's the case that an author, um, not frequently, but it is sometimes the case that an author will, is in a bad relationship with their agent, and what do you do at that point? You don't want to go on Twitter and say, attention, all other agents and folks in publishing who might be paying attention. I'm difficult to work with, and I have thoughts about this person who represents me. Please call me and let's let's chat. And let's get a new a new deal. And you want to make sure you're still viable, hopefully, to work with another agent once you've found a way to part ways, um, which is why I wanted to, to ask you about this, because you do have videos uh, available where you discuss this. Uh, and, and good for you for going out there and, and letting anybody that might be in a similar situation or a worse situation know that, hey, you're not alone. This this happens, and you're really, really good at agent finding. I watched a whole video uh, where you explained Query Tracker to me in a way that it was, oh, that's how I should have been using Query Tracker. What have I been doing? <laughs> I <did> that. <laughs> that's funny. I'm sure you did a great job because <laughs> uh, you're doing great. But so, um, uh, something like that, obviously, that's got to be a huge uh, point of discouragement. Um, and we're going to move on because we have so many encouraging things going on that I want to talk about. But in that moment where you found out this has happened to you, how do you dust yourself up, you know, pick, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get back in there? Because obviously, we're talking about the debut novel that's released. Um, you didn't let that in your career. Did you take a week and just deal with the, how bad you felt afterward, or was it just put that away, can't do anything about it? How, how, how did you recover from that? It was, uh, it was a couple different things. I think actually my initial thought was relief because I thought, okay, this agent left me. And so then that means maybe I can bring it to another agent and I wouldn't have that same like stigma with the book. So that was my initial like thought was like relief. Um, but then after talk, I actually talked to some other authors who, who were working with this agent and I, I just felt, I, I just realized they all were feeling the same way that I was feeling and no one wanted to say anything. And it really crushed me because I was I was having a really, really hard time dealing with submission. I think submission by itself is a hard thing. It's almost harder than querying, I think, um, because you're like with with querying, you, you have a chance to, to change it up. And, and, and there's so many agents that you could work with. 
with submission, you're like really putting your book into the publisher's hands. And once they've rejected it, it's sort of like a rejection forever, kind of. So I think submission by itself is a hard time. So on top of that, having a, a difficult relationship with, with someone you're working with business wise, it was it was hard. So I, I really wanted to make sure that other people realized that you know this happens this happens things happen it's okay you don't have to let it kill your dreams just get up and and i've actually had one person in particular come to me because she she was really devastated and it really hurt her crushed her dreams a little bit that she had lost an agent after coming so far and she just was like coming at me a couple months later or even maybe it was a year later she said, I'm thankful that you have been so out and open about your journey and positive because now I feel like I can start writing again. So I, I really feel like those are those are the things that make me want to share more. It, it's like this is we all feel so isolated and we all feel like our, our experiences are unique and they are, but you're not alone. So don't try not to feel like you're alone and and yeah, and I just, I I don't know how, but I had that in me. I was like, I have a chance to start new. I can do this still. But I also had other books. I was writing other books. So I wasn't trying to put all my eggs in this in this one basket, but um, I just didn't want to give up on it. So I, I ended up submitting this book on a Twitter pitch contest, maybe like a month after I, I left part of ways with my agent and that's that's eventually what brought me my book deal was this twitter pitch contest so so that was really cool but um but yeah i don't know where it came from i just was like dang i want to do this so bad so no one's gonna stop me <laughs>